Hello, and welcome to the July edition of the Corporate ESG 5 and 5 podcast, the podcast in which we spend five minutes exploring the key ESG trends set to shape the market this month. I'm Tom Gibman from Debt and Financing Solutions, and I'll be taking you through this month's key focus. ESG ratings are a relatively recent development in financial markets, and with this surge in prominence, there is an ongoing discussion around usability, transparency, and regulation. What is an ESG rating? Well, that depends on who you ask, but fundamentally, they're designed to help understand a company's exposure to and management of ESG issues. When you combine the high volume, widespread proliferation of ESG ratings, along with the number of ESG rating providers, and then you throw in the complexities that go hand in hand with sustainability considerations, it can lead to different projections and vastly different interpretations. Consequently, there have been calls for regulation in the ESG rating space, so let's explore some of the reasons why. Firstly, the current regulatory environment. In Europe, the European Securities and Markets Authority, ESMA, is currently collecting data on the ESG rating sector across Europe in order to develop a more comprehensive picture. In the July corporate briefing, we highlighted that the French financial market regulator, the AMF, is calling for regulation on not only ESG rating providers, but also ESG data and services in the market. In the UK, the FCA has taken a similar approach, recently publishing a consultation paper considering the market. An interesting takeaway here was a suggestion of introducing voluntary regulation in the ESG rating space. An example of this can be seen with the Loan Market Association's Sustainability Link Loan Principles, which are voluntary but critical to comply with market expectations. Secondly, data collection issues and inaccuracies. Data gaps or inconsistencies in ESG data disclosure by companies can lead to the use of assumptions, approximations and estimates to accommodate. This in turn may decrease accuracy, reliability and ultimately the relevance of a rating. For smaller or generally less well-resourced companies, this is accentuated as there's little availability to engage with the ESG rating feedback process. However, developments in thinking around disclosure standards, notably from the International Sustainability Standards Board, the ISSB, should lead to more uniformity on the data available. Thirdly, I think it's helpful to switch the focus from the input to how we get to the output, rating methodologies. Sustainability is a broad subject. Seeking to quantify this, while many are still seeking to agree what this is, into a relevant and consistent score is a challenge and a consensus on the approach within the market is yet to be reached. However, typically little information is provided on the methodology, assessment criteria, or the impact of controversies on a rating, often leading to uncertainty on what the evaluation is highlighting. While some diversity is largely beneficial for an evolving competitive landscape, the ranges currently seen in the market can hinder comparability across rating agencies. Fourthly, the Financial Market Standards Board, the FMSB, recently published an ESG rating spotlight review in July, which contains a number of initiatives to improve the transparency in the sector. Some suggestions include clearer labeling on ratings, such as whether the rating is sector-based or an absolute, or to provide an indication on whether there's been a complete, partial, or no response from the rated entity. Other suggestions focus on improving accessibility and reliability of ESG ratings, including signposting the sources of information for the data, including when this was collected, as well as highlighting how the data has been verified. Also outlining where data points are approximation, estimates, proxies, and assumptions, explaining why these were selected. Finally, It's important to take a step back and acknowledge the challenges that face the ESG rating space, but it's equally important to understand the impact that effective ESG ratings can have. As with any newly developed, complex evaluation system, it takes time to refine, but with constructive discussion, enhanced, verified disclosure, and regulatory intervention, ESG ratings could offer investors, lenders, and other stakeholders a reliable and reflective assessment of corporates, which in turn can support the responsible allocation of capital. Thanks for listening to this month's Corporate ESG 5 and 5. I hope you found it useful. As always, please be sure to check out our monthly newsletter linked in the description for more on the key ESG trends shaping the market this month. And if you like this episode, please follow the channel and click the notification bell so you can get future episodes as soon as they're released. Thanks again and see you next time.